Hello and uh, welcome to this presentation about uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation. The theme of this segment is meshing. My name is Reza Tabatabai. I'm a senior technical manager for the simulation products at Dassault System SOLIDWORKS and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. The topics uh, I will cover today I will focus on the basic uh, aspects of meshing parts or small assemblies talk about uh, element types that include solids, shells, and beams, and a few words about uh, special elements used for the 2D simplifications. I briefly review the available mesh algorithms and some uh, comments on uh, mesh control. Uh, some of the more advanced topics on meshing will be covered in another segment. Meshing, or using the more technical word for it, discretization, is the step of uh, breaking down a continuum, in our case a CAD model of a part or assembly, into individual or finite elements that are connected at nodes. A finite element analysis solves uh, for displacements at the nodes and calculates the strains and stresses. The initial mesh must uh, firstly uh, represent the initial shape of the model and uh, secondly uh, capture the deformed shape at the equilibrium which is dependent on the element stiffnesses formulated. In general, a finer mesh results in higher accuracy at the expense of uh, longer solution times. Now a few words about uh, element types. In principle, everything in the world is uh, three-dimensional, obviously, uh, but uh, in the context of finer element analysis, we distinguish between three, two, and one-dimensional elements. Solid elements fill or mesh uh, typical geometries with volume elements. These are uh, pyramid-shaped uh, tetrahedrons or tets in short. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, there are two types. The so-called draft quality has uh, four corner nodes and linear edges. The high quality tetrahedral has 10 nodes, four in the corners and six on the quadratic uh, edges. Each node in a TET element has uh, three translational degrees of uh, freedom. Using uh, solid elements to mesh uh, thin parts is not efficient. Uh, you have to have at least a couple of solid elements in the thickness uh, to model the bending effects. Also, you do not want to have elements that are stretched very long or, uh, technically speaking, have a bad aspect ratio. Uh, because numerically these are inaccurate, so uh, solid elements are not desirable for a thin part. Two-dimensional shell elements model thin structures more efficiently. Uh, the thickness is integrated in the element formulation and uh, not the meshing per se. Uh, you may ask what is thin? Well, uh, if you can model your part with a mid-surface and it looks the same as the solid um, shells, uh, could be an option, although you may lose uh, some accuracy in places like uh, local joints and smaller fillets. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, our shell elements uh, look like uh, triangles. Uh, there are two types again. Uh, the draft quality has uh, three corner nodes and linear edges. Uh, the high quality shell has uh, six nodes, uh, three in the corners and three on the quadratic edges. In general, uh, each node in a shell element has uh, six degrees of freedom, uh, three translational and uh, three rotational. One-dimensional or uh, beam elements uh, model long structures more efficiently. Uh, the effect of the cross-section in terms of its area and uh, moments of inertia is again incorporated in the element formulation of uh, its stiffness. A beam element has uh, two end nodes. In general, each node has a six degrees of freedom, three translational and three rotational. Uh, special 1D elements uh, will have uh, less degrees of freedom. Uh, for example, a truss element has a three translational degrees of freedom only. Now an overview of the meshing process behind the scenes. Uh, the automatic meshing of solids involves uh, two primary steps, surface and volume meshing. Uh, surface meshing attempts to fill each face with equilateral triangles of uh, default element size. Once uh, surfaces are filled, 
the volume is meshed with uh, three-dimensional uh, TET elements. For uh, 2D shell elements, there are three formulations uh, available. Uh, laminated composite shells are too specific, so we do not talk about uh, that here. Uh, but for general shells, we have thin or uh, thick shells. And in literature, sometimes people use the terminologies of Kirchhoff theory for thin shells and the Mindlin theory for uh, thick shells. In both the models, the primary bending deformation is included. The distinction is that in thin shells, uh, the less important shear deformation is neglected, uh, whereas in thick shells, uh, the effect of shear deformation is also included. Now, when do you have to go from a thin shell uh, to a thick shell? If you have a simple cantilever, there are some suggestions in terms of the span uh, to thickness uh, ratio, uh, but obviously there is a gray area and the real cases are uh, more complicated than the simple case here. Uh, the bottom line here is the relative uh, importance of bending versus shear. So that is a judgment call uh, based on the specifics of the model. And if you want to be absolutely sure about uh, the validity of the uh, assumption, uh, you have to run both cases and uh, compare the results. Uh, we said before that shell mesh has no thickness uh, during meshing and the thickness is embedded in the element formulation. That means that to understand the shell behavior, for example, in uh, pure bending, where one side is in compression and the other side is in tension, uh, we have to distinguish between uh, the top and the bottom surfaces. When you look at two surfaces that are meshed with shells, if the two shells are misaligned, in other words, uh, inconsistent in terms of their uh, top and bottom definitions, uh, you will see a discrepancy in the stresses that are averaged at the nodes uh, along the common edge. Uh, the fix is the flipping of the top uh, bottom definitions of uh, one of the neighboring shells. Another aspect when dealing with shells is the shell offset definition. Uh, when you create your CAD geometry, you may have used the uh, surfaces or maybe sheet metal functionalities or just a 3D model with extrusions. Uh, by default, the mesh is uh, located at uh, mid-plane. Now, when it comes to selecting the surface that will be meshed, this assumption may not be valid. As you see in the image here for shells with different thicknesses, uh, so it is important to account for uh, this using the shell offset option, uh, which gives you the option of uh, mid-surface, uh, top, uh, bottom surface, or an offset uh, ratio to the thickness. Uh, there is also an option called the render shell thickness in 3D, which will help you avoid the mistakes when utilizing the shell offset command. If you have used the structural weldment functionality in SOLIDWORKS, the corresponding member is going to be treated as a beam after you create a study in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Alternatively, you may have created a three-dimensional part uh, using extrusions, and if it is appropriate, uh, you can have the program treat it as a beam after creating the study. Beam elements resist axial uh, bending and torsional loads, uh, whereas uh, truss elements can resist axial loads uh, only. For beams, uh, you control the transfer of forces and moments uh, to each uh, node. Uh, this uh, allows you to release or uh, set to zero any of the force and moment components at the end. Uh, remember that restraints apply to joints and uh, therefore to all beam ends uh, that meet at that joint. The options uh, specified here override the uh, restraints. Uh, for example, if you define a beam end as a hinge and apply a fixed restraint uh, to the associated joint, the specified beam end acts as a hinge and does not carry any moments. You can have constant and tapered cross sections in SOLIDWORKS simulation. For structural members that use Weldman profiles from the SOLIDWORKS database, uh, the software calculates the section properties. For custom beam profiles, into the user-defined section properties. Certain uh, 3D models based on the geometry, boundary conditions, and loading may qualify for a two-dimensional analysis representing that uh, 3D behavior in a more efficient way. Uh, they include plane stress, plane strain, and uh, axis symmetry. 
by going from uh, 3D to 2D, you are not sacrificing accuracy. Uh, indeed, uh, you not only get a much faster solution, but an even more accurate solution. Uh, because in 2D, you can have a much finer mesh and therefore more accurate mesh, uh, which you could not have had in 3D, not least because of uh, size restrictions and uh, practical limitations. This is particularly important if, uh, for example, you are doing a nonlinear analysis or an analysis with lots of uh, no penetration contact conditions. Just to give you an idea, uh, here is a comparison between a 3D model with uh, 1.6 million nodes and an equivalent 2D mesh with less than 26,000. Uh, that is a reduction of the size by a factor of more than uh, 60. So this is a powerful option as long as the model obviously qualifies for one of these uh, three cases. You use uh, an axisymmetric 2D analysis where the geometry, loads, and restraints are symmetric about an axis uh, throughout the 360 degrees. After creating the study, you define the cut plane and the axis of symmetry and the program extracts the 2D cut section surface. For applying restraints and loads, you work with edges and vertices on the cut section. Uh, the formulation of the axisymmetric uh, elements uh, takes into account the behavior you are expecting. At the post-processing level, you have the option of visualizing the plot in uh, 3D by revolving the solution for some uh, angle. You use a plane stress 2D analysis for thin geometries with in-plane only forces. That means no out-of-plane forces. After creating the study, you define the cut plane and the section depth, and the program extracts the 2D cut section surface. In the first look, uh, this geometry here may not look uh, suitable for a 2D simplification. But uh, based on the loading and restraints, and if you consider which portions of the model are really contributing to the resistance and the overall behavior, uh, the plane stress analysis may be perfectly valid. Again, for applying restraints and loads, uh, you work with edges and vertices on the cut section. At the post-processing level, you have the option of visualizing the plot in 3D by basically thickening the plot. You use a plane, stress, a plane strain a 2D analysis for geometries that are long and where the behavior of a cut section can be a representative of the behavior along the length. So there is no force normal uh, to the section plane. After creating the study, you define uh, the cut plane and the section depth uh, used to define the area on which loads are applied. At the post-processing level, uh, you have the option of visualizing the plot in 3D by basically thickening the plot uh, as before. On the simulation menu, you can define the default options uh, for the mesh. For mesh quality, the high option is always the preferred choice. Choosing incompatible mesh makes uh, meshing uh, assemblies more flexible, but less accurate results at the interface, so use it carefully. Uh, for the measure to use, a curvature-based method is powerful but uh, costly in larger models. For automatic transition, uh, clear the option for larger models. Rendering beam profiles and shell thickness is uh, useful, uh, especially in the beginning to ensure correct setup but could slow down uh, visualization for uh, larger problems. Automatic transition is available for standard measure only. Uh, if the option is checked, the program in internally applies uh, mesh controls to smaller features, uh, holes, fillets, and other fine details of your model. You may want to uh, clear automatic transition uh, before uh, meshing uh, large uh, models uh, with many small features and details to avoid gener generating large number of uh, elements. SOLIDWORKS simulation has uh, three measures available, uh, the standard measure, the curvature-based measure, and the variation of it, the blended curvature-based measure. The parameters uh, for the standard measure are uh, the global size and the tolerance value and the option for activating uh, automatic transition. Parameters of both uh, curvature-based measures are the max and min uh, element sizes, 
a minimum number of elements uh, in a circle and element size uh, growth ratio. As always, the program comes up with the default values based on the geometry, but you have the option of overwriting uh, these values. For the standard measure, the default size is selected by the program uh, based on the model volume and the surface area. Global size is uh, the average element size. Tolerance is uh, in, in the standard measure defaults to 5% of the global element size. If the distance between two nodes is smaller than this value, uh, the nodes are merged unless otherwise specified by contact conditions. Also, adjusting the tolerance can help uh, resolve uh, some uh, meshing problems. Global mesh size uh, needs to be small enough to provide a good overall uh, stiffness solution. If the global stiffness is incorrect, uh, local results are certainly not uh, reliable. Just to give you an idea, this is a part with different uh, smaller features meshed with uh, three different meshes. The default global size is the same. The standard measure generated 53,000 nodes. The curvature-based measure generated 667,000 nodes, and the blended curvature-based measure generated 109,000 nodes. Among the three measures, uh, this is a relative ratio of 1 to 12 to 2 in this case. Uh, this is because unlike the curvature-based mesh, the blended one did not generate a finer mesh everywhere you have a small fillet, but it still did a much better distribution than the standard measure. Uh, therefore, the blended curvature-based mesh delivers a more efficient mesh. Uh, that means a finer distribution than the standard measure, less fine than the curvature-based measure, and a better distribution uh, overall. Use manual mesh control to place a refined mesh uh, strategically in your model to improve accuracy without making your mesh uh, overly large. This gives uh, extra flexibility to the user based on the specifics uh, of the design. Choose a local mesh size, uh, one third uh, to half of the global uh, mesh size or that of the surrounding surfaces for a smoother transition. Use the defaults for ratio and layers unless uh, there is a reason to change the values. And uh, feel free to experiment with different settings and numbers. Uh, the program is fast and easy to use and uh, try and error is always a viable option. Just uh, for a visual comparison, here are three cases with the same global element size. Uh, case one with no manual mesh control, case two with uh, mesh control on the faces, uh, and the case three uh, for mesh control on the edges at the interface uh, of the two uh, parts. So if you apply manual mesh controls, the program will behave the way you instruct it uh, to behave. In general, local mesh control on smaller faces will improve uh, mesh success. You can control vertices, edges, faces, and components. The parameters are element size for the selected entities and the ratio of the element size in one layer to the element size in the preceding layer. If the measure fails for a part or assembly, you can use the mesh failure diagnostic tool to get an idea of the problem and the possible fixes. After failure, you can right mouse button click on the mesh folder and launch the simulation advisor. A few suggestions uh, to remedy and fix uh, meshing problems. Check and uh, simplify the geometry as appropriate. This is another reason why it is great uh, that your solution, that your simulation is, is uh, seamlessly integrated into your CAD interface. Uh, you can use an alternative meshing uh, algorithm, uh, adjust mesh size and tolerances, apply a manual mesh control, or attempt to reduce the model into um, pieces to identify uh, problem areas. Let's uh, summarize what we reviewed. Firstly, uh, proper discretization is important uh, in the mathematical description of a simulation task. We explored some fundamental concepts on meshing and different element types, discussed some uh, mesh algorithms and mesh control, we reviewed some of the tools available for meshing and when they are uh, best applicable, uh, more advanced topics on meshing is covered in another segment. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching and your interest in the Cell Systems uh, SolidWorks uh, simulation uh, products.